Welcome to the Classy Council, Reflections for the Wise and Elegant Lady. I am Nadia, your Elegance Coach, and in this weekly podcast, I bring you insights on how to cultivate the attributes of a lady that is elegant and not only elevated in terms of appearance, but also on a much deeper level, spiritually elevated. You'll find cross-references made with verses from the Bible and from other sources of wisdom. Whether you are a beginner or advanced in your journey towards the most elegant version of yourself, a curious learner, or simply looking for some more elegant mindset inspiration, you are in the right place. So, grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and join me on this journey of discovery and growth. Composure is the crown of an elegant lady, gracefully reigning over every situation. Let's talk about composure today. The Oxford Dictionary defines it as the state or feeling of being calm and in control of oneself. The Cambridge Dictionary defines it as the quality of being calm and not emotional. Composure is an important quality to have as an elegant lady, as it allows individuals to navigate challenging situations with grace and poise. But how and why? Because it helps us maintain control over our emotions. Therefore, it helps us maintain clarity of thought. Of course, we aren't against emotions. We cannot deny them. They have their purpose. The issue with them is that they can be overwhelming at times and can lead to uncontrolled behaviors. We have more chances to assess situations objectively and make rational decisions, avoiding impulsive reactions we will most likely regret if we are able to maintain some control over our emotions. It also helps us to communicate effectively Don't you think we can express ourselves more clearly and assertively when our spirit is calm? The answer seems to be obvious. Yes. The thoughts and feelings can then be expressed in a respectful and constructive manner, most likely leading to resolution of conflict. And remember, that's what we want. Solutions. It isn't about having the last word. It is about growing, moving forward, putting everyone at ease without betraying ourselves and our boundaries. It is about finding solutions. Being composed is a sign of emotional maturity and therefore you are seen as a more reliable person, a more stable person. You are most likely to be trusted and respected because of it, because you prove that you can handle difficult situations wisely and effectively. Wisdom is another attribute of the elegant lady. I will discuss with you later and I will dedicate a whole podcast for this quality. There is one more benefit to composure that is interesting to point since we hear about it a lot these days. It's your mental health. I have many reasons to dislike the times we are living in, but also many other reasons to like them. And One of these reasons to like them, it's because of how we are now able to no longer be ashamed to say things like, I need to take care of my mental health. The awareness raised around it and the fact that more and more people will include mental health care in their life as a priority, that's something that is really positive and very good. It was essential. You now hear people say, I go to therapy without being ashamed of it because you know stress right now is a gangrene it starts in your head but affects also your body and does a lot of damages and we don't want that because not only it affects us but it affects those around us this last benefit is your well-being think about your well-being by approaching stressful situation with a level-headed mindset. Sounds easier said than done, isn't it? 
I want to suggest you some tips I practice myself to help you cultivate composure so you can gain this important elegant woman's attribute. Please note, there might be other tips that exist out there. I might not be aware of them, but I'd like to share with you what I can according to my experience and the, the knowledge I possess. First one is to practice mindfulness. I found a definition of mindfulness in an online magazine called Mindful, and it says that mindfulness is the basic human ability to be fully present, aware of where we are and what we're doing, and not overly reactive of or overwhelmed by what's going on around us. And I like this definition because it helps me see it as the ability to detach herself just for a moment from the environment we're in and to try to see ourselves as if we were out of ourselves and able to be a spectator and not an actor if that makes sense. It doesn't have to be this mystical idea of us in a lotus position and floating in the air. I really don't see it that way. It is actually simpler than that. We can engage, and that's what I do, um, in mindfulness exercises such as deep breathing. I have an app on my iPhone called Me Mental Health, where every day there is a plan that includes few minutes of breathing um, an article to gain some knowledge on mental health. The last one I read was called Dealing with Anger and Rage. It's a two minutes read, it gives insights on what is behind certain human behaviors and how to deal with them and some relaxing sounds, stories to listen to calm you down, etc, etc. But you could also um, engage in mindfulness exercises such as meditation or prayers if you are religious. I am Christian, so I, I do just that. I take my moment alone, close the door in my office, start praying to God, reading the Bible and meditate on it. It helps calming down. Personally, praying and reading specific Bible verses, depending on the situation, work best for me. I immediately calm down when I read certain verses. My favorites are, you must not hate your brother in your heart. You must not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you must love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. That's in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17 and 18. Um, another one is, if God is for us, who is against us? That's Roman chapter 8, verse 31. And a last one, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. And that's in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. A second tip to help you cultivate composure is to develop emotional intelligence. This is the ability to both manage your own emotions and understand those of the people around you. And there are five key elements to emotional intelligence. Self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. So we first have this job of understanding and managing our own emotions. It means learning to recognize triggers that may lead to emotional reactions. What is it exactly that I am feeling? Why do I feel that way? Where is this coming from? and then practice self-control. The moment you realize these uncomfortable feelings are back, step back and realize that, okay, this is this feeling again. It's just a feeling. It might just be my perception. Right now, it is just a cloud in my head. It's in my head. It is important to understand that being composed isn't about ignoring emotions. That is a dangerous thing to do. Because pretending a feeling isn't there and burying it will just make it dormant for a while, but it will come back. And it will come back stronger if you don't address it. So really, if you want to be a composed person, do not ignore your feelings. 
acknowledge them and control them. It would actually be easier for you to control them if you can identify them. Accept they are there. Accept the fact that they are here. You feel them, but you control them. They don't control you. Identifying them will allow you to understand where they come from and help you respond in a more thoughtful manner. The third tip is to step back. If you gain perspective and consider the bigger picture, you'll be able to understand where the source of the tension is coming from and that it is temporary. If you practice mindfulness, it would be easier to be able to step back mentally. But even so, sometimes a situation can be so tense that it becomes a real challenge. If you cannot do it mentally, then do it physically. And it isn't running away from the problem. It is being able to control the situation by just leaving the room for a few minutes and give yourself the time and space to assess what is happening and why. Then you come back to discuss and understand the other party's perceptions or opinions and, and the situation as a whole. The fourth advice I will give you to, um, to help you cultivate composure is self-care. Make it a habit of taking care of your physical and mental well-being. You have lower chances to respond to stressful situations with composure if you are constantly in a state of distress just because of life. We all have our daily difficulties. Sources of stress are everywhere. Bills to pay, marital challenges, relationship challenges, children to raise, a work to show up to and be good at, and so many challenges and issues we encounter from now and then. So ensure you get enough rest, eat a balanced diet, drink water, exercise regularly and engage in activities that bring you joy and relaxation. What I do is I schedule my me times now because I realized that I wrongly thought mm, I will rest when I have a moment. But this actually never happens. You have to make the moment. And if you schedule it and treat it with the same priority as your job or any other things on your priority list, then if something comes up, you'll be able to say, I cannot. I am busy taking care of myself at that time. And you will do it without feeling guilty because you will understand that taking care of yourself is not selfish. It is vital. People count on you and they need you with your full abilities. They need you positive and they need you strong. My last tip for you is to learn from role models. Who could be an example to imitate in terms of composure in your surrounding. Think about that person you admire for their calmness, their ability to remain reassuring and in control. Observe this person. How do they stand? How do they respond? What do they do? Study their behavior, communication style, and problem-solving techniques. It doesn't have to be a real person, you know, it could be a fictional one. Although the character is fictional, I absolutely admire Lady Cora Crowley from the TV series Downton Abbey, just for this specific reason, her composure. I have shared um, links of excerpts from the show in my blog articles, uh, How to Keep Your Composure. Uh, that's uh, an article you can read on my blog. The way she handles stressful situation is just exemplary to me. She is so strong in her softness, I really look up to it. I do believe that there is strength in remaining calm. Some might think not saying anything is weakness. I believe it is a proof of strength to remain calm and in control. 
I invite you, if you aren't familiar with the TV show, to at least watch on YouTube some of um, Lady Cora Crowley's best moments, and you will see for yourself what I mean by strong softness. She clearly embodies it. Let's summarize quickly the benefits of being composed. First, it is to maintain control over emotions. Second, it's to communicate effectively. Third, is to prove ourselves to be emotionally intelligent and therefore reliable. And fourth, for our own well-being, to maintain a good mental health. And here, here's a quick recap of the five tips we have discussed that will help you cultivate composure. It's the practice of mindfulness, the development of your emotional intelligence, the ability to step back, self-care, and having role models. I am ending this podcast now with a biblical verse worth to meditate on. It's in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word steers up anger. I wish you well and, of course, success in your journey to become the gracious and poised woman you want to be. If you like meditation in a form of affirmations and positive declaration you can listen to or repeat after, I invite you to go on my YouTube channel, Madame Kabongo, and click on the playlist Affirmations for the Elegant Woman. You will find one focused on composure. Stay tuned for the next podcast that will help you gain confidence, elevate yourself, and become the most refined version of yourself. This was Madame Kabongo. Thank you for listening. See you next time.